back for another Dev Diary. Two different fascist paths, communist path, democratic path, non-aligned path. And of course, if you go fascist or monarchist, we've got the path for the Roman Empire. This one's going to be spicy, boys. I hope you sat down. So first of all, what are the requirements to go down the alternative fascist paths? It looks like the struggle for Ethiopia has to be the deal. Ethiopia has to go a little bit wrong. Then you can start to undermine the deuce and start a conspiracy against Mr. Mussolini. And as you can see now, the balance of power shifts more toward the council as the council tries to seize more control and move power away from Mussolini, push him into the shadows. And how do you do that? Well, you've got the options now for slander the deuce and criticize the war effort, which costs you some political power, but it will shift you more towards the council. Then when you've got enough power on the council, you can choose to overthrow Mussolini. Convene the Grand Council here and then depose Mussolini. Now you've disposed Mussolini here. And now you've got the option to either go for Dino or Italio. Am I saying this right? And these are your alternative fascist leaders. One has more emphasis towards the military. I believe it's uh, Italio on the left here. And Dino has a more focus on either working with the British or the French to proclaim the Italian Empire and focusing more on internal stability within Italy. The transfer of power is never smooth. So what you'll have to do when you become the new deuce is consolidate your power. You can purge other party members, get rid of the old generals that supported Mussolini. Finally, decide what to do with Mussolini full stop. So purge the generals, purge the advisors, spare them all, or purge them all. As you can see, this gives you more power towards the deuce in this case. It says Mussolini here, but it'll be dependent on whoever is the ruler of the fascist party in Italy. And then if you decide what to do with Mussolini, let him stand trial, execute him or assassinate him. Once again, even though it says here, execute Mussolini, it gains your power towards Mussolini. The power of Mussolini continues on after his death. No, serious, that's not up to date. It depends on who is the leader of the fascist party. So here's an opportunity to go for Divino Deuce, which I guess builds a cult of personality around the leader. Offering some juicy bonuses here daily command power offering division organization plus five percent extra recruitable population and of course consolidating power over the current leader of italy alternatively you can go for a greater purpose which gives you different bonuses in a different direction is it all about you the leader or is it great for the greater power of fascism in europe well we'll see so here's one of the alternative deuces. I feel the need to say douche, but it's not deuce. The deuce, which gives political power, fascism support, and air research speed. So he focuses. So he's a focus more on military, this guy. Aviation hero. And as you can see, he does focus on the army, the air force. Lots of combined arms, land, and air warfare. Gonna be interested to see what these bonuses are. Absolutely massive discounts for your doctrines here. This gives you really the ability to rush doctrines. Specifically, you're trying to like fight and grind XP in Ethiopia, and then also get these discounts as well. That's gonna really stack. The old part of Balbo's second unique path starts with the fourth shore, which was the kind of a nickname for Libya in Italy at the time. The path is also the only way to get further resources in Tripoli in the form of oil and steel. That's useful. The riches were discovered in Libya during the war, but never developed or prospected until later. So more oil in Tripoli or go for steel. The only thing I'm going to say is please give me enough oil and steel to make it worth my while to defend Libya. Because one of the big issues in Hoi 4 that everyone's aware of is what's the point of defending Africa? There's little consequences if you lose it. Give me something inside of like Libya to make me want to defend it. Because otherwise I'll just, I'll not care. And so it shows you a way of integrating Libya even more. Gives you more irregular infantry, more militia. And you can see the bonuses here. You get local factions for 50%. So it's basically a special modifier specifically just for Libya. So in that circumstance, you probably could build inside of Libya as if it was kind of a core state. It's a shame you can't actually core it. Oh, that's interesting. Compliance growth plus 10%. That's very, very spicy. Next up, we have Dino, the alternative deuce, and he has options to build relations and uh, forge a better, stable Italy. He also has justification wartime, minus 15%. Wow, that's really good. Wow, especially for those early conquests. The more you can reduce justification time, the more conquests you can do early games. So this might be an option to go for an early yoinking of territory. So Dino here has a special ability to try and build forge relations with the UK or France. 
Which is interesting because there's an alternative French path where you let Italy have the Horn of Africa and you force a faction between Italy, France, and the UK. So it's going to be interesting. There's going to be like a little bit of an overlap there. So seek British military cooperation. You can see it boosts relations, creates a research military program, and also gives you some, wow, some really big bonuses. 50% for two aircrafts, 50% for two ships. Wow, that's really good. Alternatively, you go with France, you get armor and infantry weapons. This is really cool because you've got the option now, like do, do you want to focus on your ships and aircraft? Aircraft's really awesome to get early on, bonuses. Uh, or go for armor tech, which overall, they're both pretty good. So it's a hard decision to make. And then it leads to a push for more cooperation, which leads to a non-aggression pact. And aggression packs become void if you declare war on a guaranteed nation. So if the UK guarantees Poland and you justify and declare on Poland, that non-aggression pact becomes null and void anyway. Non-aggression packs are kind of limited to what they can actually do. You're always better off in a faction or guaranteeing each other. That's the best next step. Guaranteeing each other means you can just declare war and nobody's going to care, particularly if it's the UK too. The climax of Dino's path is to proclaim the Italian Empire. With our response empire it will be less costly to annex territories on the african continent so it's the idea of building a greater italian empire in africa more colonies basically non-core manpower works in synergy with that navy organization interesting annex cost minus 15 percent. that's interesting to, to seize puppets however one of the requirements for this focus is you need a million manpower in the field that's quite tricky as, as Italy. That's a lot of manpower in the field. It's going to be hard to pull off. Overall, though, these bonuses are a little bit underwhelming. So we're going to come down to this empire bonus here. Like, how much land can you seize from Africa? Most of it's French or English, and you're trying to build relationships with them. It kind of feels like it counteracts itself. Do I want to love France or the UK, or do I want to steal their colonies? Which path is it? What am I meant to do? I don't know. So Dino Ozo's focus and law and order and consolidating power, and you've got economic reforms and improving industry and expanded corporatism yay which this bonus feels so worth resource gather rate so it's always nice to have local factories plus 10 percent, so that's like a compliance thing compliance growth amazing extra construction always good and four mils okay at least this is a focus that feels like it's worth my time i've always said this guys i'll say it a million times there's nothing worse than working your way through a long focus tree to get to the very bottom and gaining one infrastructure or one military factory or five percent factory output it's just so underwhelming give me a big payoff at the end of it make me work hard so therefore when i get the final bonus it makes me feel like i've gained something good but otherwise why is it just no point? This feels decent. I'm okay with it. Now the balance of power will update based on who is the deuce. In this case, if you're going for the military man, you can say he gives bonuses to army and you gain, oh, lack of resources penalty. That's really interesting. Oh, wow. So what that means is when you're low on, let's say steel and you're producing something that needs steel, but you don't have enough steel, the penalty to having not enough steel is less. So you can do like really weird, weird wonky things while producing guns when you have no resources for it. Some of these bonuses needed to be added to maybe some of the smaller nations like for instance a nation that doesn't have steel for instance and has the ability to like try and pull steel from the domestic industry maybe you could pay consumer goods for it that would be really cool overall lots of factory output i'll admit though construction speed and the consumer goods can sting a little bit particularly in the long run but it looks okay next up we have the consolidation boyo the stability boy extra construction equipment conversion speed minus seven percent yeah that's not that great training speed plus seven point five percent that's not that great either and economic laws cost minus 30 percent trade and conscription wow this guy's going to gain you a lot of political power and gain you extra construction. This seems like the stronger path. This feels like the best replacement for Mussolini. But we're not done yet. That's right. There's a third path after when you oust Mussolini. And that is to bring back the monarchy. We have non-aligned bios. Uh, Victorio Manuel III. Wow. Stability and command point modifier and army XP plus 5%. Not overwhelmingly amazing, but... Hmm. Kind of cool. And this is the path here. So you can see here, over here is the alternative deuces on here. But here you have the monarchist path. It is really girthy. And as you can see, if you look further down here, you can see it kind of consolidates into a third path that all three of these guys can go for. We'll come back to that. So once again, we have another one of lack of resources penalty, minus 15%. This is so useful. Once again, particularly for a nation that doesn't have a, a lot of a certain resource. And nations that don't have rubber would benefit from this so much. It's a new thing in the game too, because you don't see a lot of that. In fact, I can't recall any focus tree that has that actually. I think about it. Maybe some of the newer ones, like in No Step Back. Also, this is pretty interesting. Nuclear research as Italy, gaining extra production of nuclear, plus extra research speed overall. I believe this is ahistorical because it mentions that you could become one of the first atomic nations. So I wonder if there's any history behind that. I don't think so. Now, if you go down the king path, 
You can either put power to the king, basically making your monarchy non-aligned, or you revoke the Asabo law. Did I say that right? And this gives you the option for a Christian democracy or a democratic king. So there is a democratic path now. Everyone rejoice. Wow, I love democracy. I love democracy. But you know, uh, the current king is very, very old. So you have the option to abdicate him to replace him with, I believe, the son. Uh, he is an experienced monarch, so you get some hefty penalties. But overall, he's a very eager commander. So it's one of those situations where it's like, are you willing to trade the bonuses that exist in king? gets which aren't that great for potentially some negatives if you build your economy up and you've already got done all your political power this monarch's probably going to be better for you because you've already got all these economic laws these pp requirement advisors let's have a look at the bonuses a maximum command power increase that's not great command power modifier that's not great stability factor now actually overall he's not actually that great unless you can develop him and potentially gain more bonuses unsure work in progress and be aware if you go down the monarchist path the balance of power will still exist but now you can either side with the king or the papal states balance of power by the papal influence which is going to be really interesting to see what the bonuses are this just gives nothing away democracy the worst form of government apart from all the others that have already been tried christian democracy nothing here really stands out usually monarchist path usually give lots of political power and maybe sometimes give construction bonuses usually i pray i put my hands together and say please paradox Please buff democracies. Democracies need to do more, please. Maybe one day we'll see it, who knows. So overall, the very bottom of the focus tree, the bottom, the very bottom, if you've gone down the two alternative deuce paths, or if you've gone down the king path, you have the option for Mare Nostrum, which is the Roman Empire restoration. Doesn't give much away about what this includes, but this is very interesting. South American alliances, Iberian protection. That's really interesting. What's surprising though, is it doesn't make a mention of Mussolini. Will he be able to go down this path? It doesn't make it clear. It doesn't look like it from that focus tree we saw up above. So I don't know. But then we have Mussolini here. Augustus Mussolini, amazing. Look at this, restored Roman Empire, amazing. Oh no, it is available. So it's available for Mussolini, Balbo, Grandi, as well as the Monarchist Pass. So, oh, it well, connects everything up at the bottom. This reminds me of the China focus tree, not the very bottom where you have the option to kind of like unify China, gives you lots of justifications for war to unify all the Chinese warlords, for instance. It feels like one of those, like, oh, that's your reward for going through the full focus tree. You're gonna get some spicy options to either consolidate your nation or gain free justifications for war, which is always sweet it's always nice that there's a payoff at the very end Turan as well with turkey as well that's a really good payoff at the bottom of the focus tree so here's some new generals none of them really stick out to me it's an interesting new icon here is this a colonial guy maybe he's a desert fox he's got the ability to get six more divisions under him there's nothing really much that stands out here no one is particularly truly unique so you've got a new option here for a colonial nation the italian east africa you need to complete the focus for a ministry of italian africa and the new emperor of ethiopia unlike collaboration governments it will not have cause in any state. However, it will come under unique national spirit, political advisor and country leader, providing bonuses towards resistance and compliance in its territory so the AI can manage without babysitting it. However, if you still struggle due to the big war effort to other reasons, other Italy will also have the option to feed its puppet with more manpower and equipment, which the garrison states. Have us the ability to annex this. Just have a button that basically says, this little project that we worked on here just didn't work. Have a cost of 200 political power and it just annex the nation completely. I always hate sometimes when you release a nation, it feels like it's such a big deal to do that step. However, reverting it is very difficult. It's like an easy one button press, boom, puppet appears. And then to go back and revert that process, it's like so much work. I feel like there could be a good option just to press a button and go, boop, it goes bye bye. This little project that we worked on, no, it didn't actually work. Never mind, GG. Balkan diplomacy category has been expanded with many new flavorful decisions. Have you seen some of them? Send an ultimatum to Yugoslavia. So we've got options here, it looks like, to potentially seize land diplomatically which is always fun. Oh, there's nothing more fun than expanding your borders 936, 937 by just pressing a button. It's just so fun. And if they say no, hey, free war, CB. Who can't complain about that? Support the Hungarian claim to Vojvodina. Offer the islands back to Greece for an alliance. Or offer the islands to Turkey for an alliance. Interesting. Demand the militarization of these parts of Turkey. Some really interesting options here. I wonder what this coronation of the, the prince does as well. Greater Italy is now an option. Similar to Greater Hungary, I guess. And if you go for it and you fulfill the requirements, uh, you get organization plus 15%. Wow, that's high. Water plus 10% is also nice. And daily compliance game 0.05. Wow, guys. Oof, oof. 
Oof, oof. Wow, we have a winner right now for uh, the best path because those bonuses are very spicy. So what do we have here? We have Crete, we have Dalmatia, and we also have Corsica. Wow, okay, this is going to be very, very difficult to complete. Ugh. Okay, that's going to be quite tricky. Hey, listen, nothing that I love more other than something you have to work hard for. And then when you finally get it, it really is a good payoff. That's amazing. Anyway, we have the anti-fascist Republican branches now. Yay. So if you go down, it's like the failure in Ethiopia path. You have the option to go for the anti-fascist path, which is this one. It leads down here, which by the looks of things, it breaks off here into communist on the left. And then on the right, we've got Italian socialism, by looks of things. And these are really long, big paths too. So it looks like the com because it's a classic communist path, you try and build opposition inside of the nation. So you go for the north, which is usually the area you want to go for, because that's where all the factories are, and the southern farmlands. Deny the deuce, appeal to the bourgeoisie. Italian Republic. And you've got corresponding balances of power with it as well. Either power to the Communist Party, I presume, or power to the democracy. Oh, wow. Wow. So this is how the new path's going to work. So it's either going to be swinging towards communism on the left or democracy on the right. That's such a cool concept. So it's basically going to be the, so the socialist versus the communist. That's what it's going to be. I'm surprised that this doesn't take advantage of the existing ideology mechanics. Like if you tip in one direction or the other, you gain certain bonuses, for instance. I guess it's nice that they're using the balance of power. However, I feel like the game already has those mechanics to represent the pie chart of ideology. Feels like with every expansion power that comes out, the ideological pie chart has become more and more redundant. It doesn't even feel like it should be in the game anymore. Anyway, here we have the communist path. Unite the party, the path of progress. Pretty standard, nothing really jumping out. I feel like I'm looking at the Yugoslavian communist path. Interesting bonus here. Max volunteer force cap plus three. So we have the, basically the, the world police for Italy. Air volunteer cap plus one. What does this mean? Plus one of an air wing. Does that mean we get to send one extra plane? I don't know. Terrain penalty reduction plus 10%. That's amazing. It's basically a little bit of adaptable. Adaptable is 25%, isn't it? So an extra 10%. Oh, that's so good. Oh, we have a new contender of the best path, guys. We have a new contender. And here we are, the red shirts. Wow. Communism. Does it work? We're going to find out. And here is the communist path. Unite the party. Follow the Soviet Union. So this is very standard. It's like, oh, do you want to get help from the Soviet Union? Or do you want to do it solo? And and then interesting as it follows up and it joins up with the bomb. That's the, that's the only bit about it that's a little bit different, how it joins up at the very end. Unite anarchist confederations to fight against Stalinism. And here are some of the leaders. We have organizer, we have a field marshal with the defensive trait and mountaineer. Cool, cool. I like that how these advisors stand out and look very different as well. Oh, this looks really cool. And now we have Italian socialism. So which is the democratic path under the communist path? Yes. One thing in the issue with sending aid to the Spanish Republic, maybe the devs can fix this, is that when you send them lend lease of volunteers and then the anarchists rise up, there's usually no supply route, so you can't even send more lend lease. And then the troops and volunteers you've sent to Republican Spain, they're stuck on so the low supply. I don't know, that's always been a bug and it's been around since forever. So I've never really wanted to ever help the Republicans. Help the anarchists, maybe. Help the nationalists, maybe, but not the Republicans. Mafia abroad. Democracy. I love democracy. <laughs> Social stability. So we have two options here. European democracies, peace preservation, establish old alliances, bring down the fascist strongholds. Goodbye, Mr. Hitler. You are not part of this path. So this is the deep part of the democratic, socialist, democratic, communist path for democracy. Yeah, that's the one. So there's technically two democracy paths for this focus tree. One under monarchist. No, there's three. There's the Christian democracy, socialist democracy, and then there's the monarchist constitutional monarchy. PDX now love monarchies, confirmed. The last branch to show the anti-colonial branch. So classic communists always hating the colonies, imperialism, bad. Negotiations with Albania. Listen, I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this again. This needs to offer good bonuses, all right? Don't just give away Libya, give away Albania, give away Ethiopia, and then just not give the player anything in return. Don't do the communist UK path, because that path was not the best. <laughs> Just give me good bonuses, okay? Make it worth my while. Because otherwise, it's just pointless. Why would I want to release Colony, which I'm potentially gaining something for it, to lose everything? I don't know. It just seems dumb to me. Liberate the workers of Africa. Sounds like a really interesting focus name, but probably not as exciting as I can imagine it in my head. Abolish the colonies work similarly to the French focus French Union, in which the colonial territories and puppet states managing the colonies will hold referendums, decide if they want to become English or parts of the Italian state, or prefer to go for independence. Okay, that's kind of cool. 
people. But listen, make sure that I have an option to sway them. Although I don't make it just a random roll of the dice. The dice are not fun. RNG is not fun. Certain factors such as high compliance and regional development will make the AI lean more towards being integrated. Yes! After that, you can expand your resource industry, integration regions, and colonialism to get some early war goals against other colonial powers in Africa. And oh my goodness, look at all these advisors. Are those corgis? Have they reintroduced the corgis? Nothing particularly stands out here. It's hard to see until you hover over the bonuses. When I hover over, then I'll be like, ah, oh, he looks pretty good. Interesting advisors here. Oh, these are agents. These are actual operatives. Interesting. So you got a UK boyo here, different traits. This is something about agencies that just needs to be more exciting. I can't look at agents and be excited because most of the time, most of the operations aren't very good, especially if you're playing democracy and you don't have the option to form a collaboration state, which is the best operation in the game. Once again, operations. Oh man, they so need a buff. They so need a buff. Last but not least, a small tease of more 3D models on the works. We have Horsey Boy with red hat. Camel Boy with red hat. We have uh, T-Posing with African-themed attire. Amazing, guys. Amazing. Next step diary will be about the alternative paths for Switzerland, which is going to be super exciting because Switzerland is like the most unknown nation in the game. I don't know the history of it is Switzerland, so it's going to be exciting to see. Guys, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the comments. Anything you're particularly excited about? What path are you going to go down? Please comment below. Say, I'm going to go down the Christian democracy path for reasons. Guys, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. You think this video was good? Well, this one is the final form. Click it.